the protests by the Gen Zs seem to be having a revolutionary impact on the affairs and management and running of this country. And for sure, the protests will have a real impact on the future prospects of how we are going to conduct the politics of this country. Welcome to the Bold Analysis. My name is Frank. Of course, we know that the protests really brought to light some of the punitive things that have been done by this government and especially on the issue of taxes, debt management and on the issue of respect for human life. The recent killings or discoveries of bodies within Kware Estate in Pipeline, Embakasi, have really given the government a bad name, especially at a time when President Truto is pushing so hard for dialogue with the opposition, mainly Rael Odinga, in order to form a broad-based government of national unity. And maybe to some point up to until last week, Ruto thought that he had managed to convince Kenyans and managed to convince Raila Odinga for that multi-sectoral dialogue in order to bring him to help him run the affairs of the government. But also, it's not just Ruto, Raila also finds himself in a very hard place of how he's going to convince his fellow Azimio principals, members of parliament and Kenyans at large on his endorsement for the multi-sectoral dialogue. Just a humble call or an update on some of our followers have been of course asking on the presence of Kevin and uh, it is indeed true that he took some time off because he was involved in an accident almost over the weekend I think so yeah if I'm not wrong as he was traveling home together with his family in his car got an accident somewhere around uh, Nakuru, past Nakuru, where his car overturned and he was lucky enough to escape, but with minor injuries. Of course, the doctors have confirmed that he's in a stable condition and uh, that he'll be able to join us sometimes within this week or next week. So maybe just as a humble call or uh, as a humble request, you know, he's been one of us. He's been supporting so many charitable courses and uh, He's part and parcel of us, he's a family. So maybe if you have prayers or you have messages that you want to send to him, maybe financial support, emotional support, any kind of support that you'd like to extend to him, I've attached the pictures from the scene and also his mobile phone number that you can get in touch with him over the same. Now, now back to our analysis. The intended or the planned multi-sectoral dialogue that will involve Raila Odinga together with William Ruto is not going to, um, to be an easy walk in the park for the two because it is clear that Kenyans and a majority of them, especially the Gen Zs, are not just the Gen Zs, of course even the millennials and other generational headsets are opposed to these dialogues. Because they see that this is a, a way of the political class always taking advantage of the citizenry class. Of course, over the weekend, there seemed, there was, according to our sources, there was an insider's meeting at uh, Oparanya's home in Emabole, Butere Kakamega County, where the ODM boss, Raila Odinga, met with other Azimio principals. Though, the source did indicate that Martha Karua was not in attendance. But for those who are in attendance, the likes of Eugene Wamalwa, Kalonzo Musioka, Jeremiah Kioni, and Ruth's party presidential candidate, that is in the run-up to the 2022 general elections, Jedwa Dakoya, all, the, all of them said no to dialogue with Ruto. They've made it clear. And even Kalonzo in the past instances, has made it clear that he is not going to be part of the intended dialogues that is said to be done with President William Ruto. Ah, yeah. 
basi leo ni siku ya huzuni mkubwa nataka niwaulize kweli tuna inji ama tuna wangapi nasema tuna inji Niko tayari kukomboa yenu. Wangapi wako tayari? Yale ambayo tumeona hapa nataka pia niwaulize. Nataka kufanya mazungumzo na watu wanaoua. Wangapi anasema mazungumzo tawe? Basi Wangapi wangapi anashukuru baba akuja kusimama na watoto wake Baba ni baba sio Baba ni baba sio Kwa hivyo Eh Maneno ndio hayo. Something seems clear. That the dialogue between Raila and Ruto is a way to see to it that Raila gets the AUC seat and helps Ruto manage the current political tension and temperatures in the country so that Ruto can have a smooth running of the country. But it is true that Raila and Ruto are going to sell through murky waters, both internal and externally, especially with the force and the pressure and resistance that they are going to receive both from their internal political circles and external political circles are not going to make it easy for them to have a dialogue or to have a working partnership. So maybe if the two choose that we are not going to listen to the external resistance, we are not going to listen to the internal resistance, but rather push for our own interests, that is for a working dialogue, for a dialogue in order to chant ways or chat ways forward for a working partnership. Internally, Raila has that internal resistance. Some members of the ODM party were opposed to this. They only came to order when the National Executive Council of ODM told them that this is now the decision of the party. Of course, those seems to be direct orders from the party boss that you have to whip the members to give it a nod. Try to sell it to the people. You remember that meeting of a PG group between William Ruto and some leaders from the central Kenya where he directed them that go and prepare the ground. Tell them that there is something that is coming of a working partnership between me and ODM boss Raila Odinga. Externally, Raila Odinga, from his political base, people do not want him to dialogue with Ruto. We saw that one. When he went to Kware in Embakasi to go and look, visit the scene of the Kware Embakasi killings, people and the youth present at that rally or event started shouting that no dialogue. No dialogue. But Raina seemed to be brushing the message up to at some point when the messages got louder and clear. That, you, that is when he was forced to say that he is not going to dialogue with, pe with people with blood on their hands. <laughs> Mwakajana, mwakajana, tulikuwa kwa barabara, lakini nyote hapa. Aleo, aleo, mwakajana bizana.
Tukiangalia juu ya ukosefu wa kazi kwa vijana. Tukiangalia juu ya ufisadi. Tukiangalia juu ya ubaguzi wa kikabila. Sasa tunasema yote. Baada ya mabaki mpaka siku ya leo. Na kiri vijana. Ambao nataka tuashe kwa mikono. Kujitoka kujitoka wengi. Jenzi 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 Yale yale tulikuwa tunasema mwaka jana That is when they chose now to listen to him but when he said that the crowd again charged meaning that the the ground or his his political base is not in for that uh, dialogue the other thing that the dialogues will have it is considered that it will have a serious impact on azimio as a coalition first because with the other principles within azimio not vetoing for dialogue it means that he's going to be in a tough place they might decide to let him go alone without their input without their support and now they might be forced to start chatting their way forward towards 2027 because we are even asking ourselves where is Martha Karua? Martha Karua is not in this. She's not come out publicly to speak especially with the recent waves of the protests. We've not seen her. People are asking where is he, where is her? And now that the likes of Eugenio Malwa, Kalonzo Musyoka, Jeremiah Kioni and Jojo Jakoya are not in for dialogue, maybe if the dialogues were to go as per the original intention that we might then we might see a split on Azimio and maybe ODM might decide that they want to go to dialogue alone so that they face whatever happenings or whatever effects the dialogue might come with along whether positive or negative because we've also come to the understanding that the main reason for having the dialogues of course, as we've said, is to have them incorporated into the government. Their ODM are also looking forward to some of the ODM party members being appointed to the cabinet that Ruto dismissed last week. The dialogues also face another hard resistance on the Gashagwa factor. Gashagwa has always made it clear, he made it even clear when this government came into force or into office, that he's not in for Raila, for bringing Raila into government. And even his allies, I saw Nyeri Governor Mtai Kaiga say that Ruto has to be careful not to, bling, uh, not to bring sorry, Raila into his government. That Raila will, will distract his government and his plan and manifesto as he intended to deliver to Kenyans. So that Gashago factor is also giving Ruto a headache on, as to how to approach the dialogue. But on Ruto's side, I don't see that resistance much resisting him or rendering him from participating in the dialogues. He might choose to ignore the resistance from Gashagwa's side, then go to dialogue, bearing in mind that he's preparing ground to get Western region vote basket block into his side with Musalem Davadi and Raila. And now that him and Raila had worked before, he sees to it that there is nothing that is going to present, uh, prevent him from working with Raila if that is the thing that is going to help him to be able to run the government, to be able to tow down the political temperatures from the Gen Zs. That is how it seems on that other side. And also, also still on this, the Kalonzo factor, Kalonzo might choose to be part of the dialogue and there didn't his political dreams of 2027 because people will say, you know, you've always been with these people even when, at a time that you should now stand your ground. If he doesn't stand his ground now, he misses, he, 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 he stares at a, an, an opportunity of missing on his political base. And that support that people will get, give him in 2007 depends on how he's going to handle this issue of dialogue. And I think that is something that is also realized. He's issued his stance and said publicly that he is opposed to dialogue. 
He is not going to be part of dialogue. He doesn't want to be part of dialogue. So maybe if Ruto and Raila choose to go to dialogue, then Kalonzo might choose to stand alone due to even public resistance and try to face 2027 alone. That might or might not work for him. But I see, on the contrary, might work for him. Now that people will be saying, you know, you know the, the, the labels that have been on the street that Raila working with Ruto will be a betrayal on the people. That is the general feeling on the ground. People are feeling that the opposition shall have betrayed the people. Also, you know, ODM, as I've said, through its neck, already held a meeting and had told their members that they are open to dialogue. And they've also requested for a parliamentary group meeting, according to our inside sources, that will meet tomorrow, the 16th day of this month, as from 9 a.m. And uh, members have been strongly advised to attend the meeting in person. And you remember last week, Edwin Sifuna issued an ODM statement that ODM is open to dialogue. ODM is open to possibilities of dialogue, having issued ultimatums that must be made before they dialogue. So, Ruto is also trying to explore the options that are available to him, especially now that he seems to be somebody who is not trusting on his deputy, Rigadiga Shagwa. So, and even we saw this, some of the protesters, when they were arrested, they said that among the questions that they were being asked by those officers that arrested them, who are highly said to be members, or to be officers rather, from the National Intelligence Service and the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, DCI, they were being asked who are funding their protests and are they related, are the protests related to Rigiji? Those are some of the questions that some of those people who were abducted were saying. So, Ruto might be seeing to it that Gashagwa might be having some vested interests in the demos. And uh, therefore, the only way to keep awake, the only way to keep him on toes and running the government is try to shift away from Rigadi's side and try to seek Raila's mandate in order to help him complete his term or maybe seek for a uh, re-election in 2027. Also, Raila, together with his party ODM, have prepared already a raft of demands that they expect to present for that in that dialogue, in that multi-sectoral dialogue. So it, it tells you that there are people who are already, they, they seem to be already decided. The only limiting factors to them are the decisions of other Azimio principles and the public resistance to this. Otherwise, the dialogue could have already started because it's said that uh, they uh, think that the dialogue should uh, uh, be taking around six days from the day that they'll agree on when to start it. Of course, the issues that ODM, according to reliable sources, has presented as ultimatums that have to be made before that dialogue, one of them is the dissolution of parliament, reducing the cost of living, that is especially on taxes, the resignation of Nairobi police commander uh, Adam Somnibungay and the charging of uh, Professor Kiture Kindiki, who is the immediate former CS of internal security, and Jafet Kome, the immediate inspector, uh, former inspector general of police. So, uh, the question that should be asked is rather, or that citizens are asking in regards to this dialogue, is the issue of the NADCO dialogue, the, the National Dialogue Committee that was made by sides from Ruto and sides from Raila. What is his status? That, that was a dialogue. What did it achieve? And how is the dialogue that is going to be a multisectoral be different from the NADCO dialogue? How is it going to be different? How is it going to impact on the lives of citizens? How is it going to address the issues that are being raised by the Gen Z's, the issue of unemployment, the issue of high taxes, the issue of corruption, forced abductions and killings? How is that going to address that? in particular. So also there is a general feeling among the people that ODM and Azimio, if they are to go to that dialogue, then it might seem that as an hijack 
on the Gen Z's protests against the government, especially at a time when the opposition was largely silent on the operations that were being pressed by this very government, Trof Ruto. Thank you for watching. That marks the end of our analysis.